Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this video is a continuation of my discussion on this massive uh, tornado outbreak that is occurring as I'm filming this video. So I showed you the storm, the SPC uh, Center, which is a uh, the National Weather Center, um, the, the Storm Prediction Center data or predictions, the website is showing the that the risks of, of massive tornadoes today is extremely high. We've known this for a number of days and now these tornadoes are, the outbreak is, is well underway. So as I left off in the last video, I was talking, I showed you Earth Null School, okay? And I showed you the conditions over, over the region um, where this outbreak is occurring. So again, if you click on Earth, okay, you, 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 so go to North America, mouse around and magnify it to the, the, the uh, intensity, the, the uh, scale that you like. And I'm looking at the air at the surface, but I'm looking at the relative humidity. And what I was showing is this is called the dry line here because the temperature doesn't change much from one side to the other, but the humidity does. It's very, very dry on this side. 16% relative humidity. The air is coming over the dry land, the desert. Very, very hot and uh, humid, hot and dry air. Whereas on this side, we've got the hot, humid air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. So on this side of the dry line, the, humid, the relative humidity is, is much, much higher, you know, 65%, 50%, 66 and so on. So it's about, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s mostly. And over here, it's, it's in the single digits, certainly less than 20. Okay, so this is the dry air, hot air, and this is hot air that's humid. So this is what's known as a dry line. And up here, we get a similar situation. This air is even more humid than this air. Another air mass is, is coming from this direction. So where all of these air masses meet, this is perfect trigger point. Remember that the, the jet stream is coming down here. If we look at the, the mean sea level pressure, this is a, this is a low pressure region, which is part, part of the, which happens in a jet stream trough. Remember, if we go here, so the jet stream trough is low pressure here and followed all the way down here. Um, and there's also something called the um, cape. Okay, now if you put your mouse on here, it tells you what it is. It's convective available potential energy from the surface. So let's go back here to air at the surface. Um, and we're looking at the cape, okay? So over here, okay, there's, there's very little energy in this cape. But look over here, 4,000 joules per kilogram. You know, let's zoom right in and find the um, most intense region. So you can see this band right up here. Very, very, you know, intense. 41, 4,000. 40, almost 4,500, okay? A little while ago, I saw up numbers up to reaching up to 5,000 in this region. I can't uh, find, you know, but now the high, now it's over 4,000 consistently, you know, 4,000 to 4,500 joules per kilogram. So this is lots of energy. This is a very energetic atmosphere um, and uh, when you have high cape numbers, um, then you can get explosive buildup of supercells, and then you can get them uh, spinning off uh, and generating uh, tornadoes through the process of tornado genesis, which I'll talk about. Okay, so in summary here, we've got a massive dry line coming up here and extending up here. Very hot, dry air on the left side, very humid air and hot on the right side, not much temperature change across this line, but a huge change in water 
vapor that's in the air and the relative humidity. And that's leading to tremendous cape or conventional con, convection available potential energy from the surface going up into the air. So this is where all of these storms are being generated. And you can see how the cape is varying over time. So we, I backed up three hours. Okay, and this is where you can get numbers that are approaching 5,000 in this region here. Okay, if I back up another three hours. Okay, maybe it was here. Here we go, 5,400 joules per kilogram. Look at these numbers here. Massive numbers in the Cape to generate these storms. And going back and going back. Whoa, what's happening here? It's very strange. Okay, so this is how the, uh, what is going on right here? 58.55. That I have to, not sure what, what uh, it just looks a bit strange. Okay, and then to where we are now. Okay, um, what else can I show you? Total precipitable water, yes. Okay, here we go. So total precipitable water, this is kilograms of water per square meter. Um, if you go up from the surface up through the atmosphere, it's how much water is available. So if we look, you know, look at this side here, it's all of the brown colors. It's 13 kilograms per square meter, 15, 5. Okay, you can see what it is here. And then go over here. So 5 to 15, say. And over on this side, we've got 30, consistently over 30. Okay, so just crossing this line, we have consistently over 30 on the wet side, and we've got a half to a third on the left side. Okay, this is, this is the, the perfect indication of, of a dry line here. So this is the, where, where these storms are, are generating. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, go back here so since i showed you this uh hashtag tornado in twitter 25 new results uh and let's see here's some uh t tornado warned areas massive tornado on the ground in midland county texas um a video of it um showing uh op open farmland you know just whatever people are, are sending so damage damage uh tornado damage and path visible outskirts of mangum oh oklahoma you know hail things okay so just have a look on on twitter yourself that's under the uh tornado hashtag and this is under tornadoes different hashtag um not as popular right so you have to find the um, the hashtag that has the most information on this, this particular event. You know, hashtag storms is probably a big one also. Um, and also, you know, in Twitter, it's very useful to follow uh, some people that are, you know, out there on the ground looking at these storms. So Reed Timmer with AccuWeather is, uh, he drives this tank-like uh, device and they send up drones and they send up rockets to measure the state of the atmosphere. And um, this was a image from, I believe, Friday night. He was outside of the vehicle, and a tornado, tornado genesis was just happening basically right over their head. So he ran between some cars. You can see all of this scud, all of this dirt being kicked up over a wide area. It was over a wide area, and then it focused into uh, a, uh, a funnel, basically. So... You know, very lucky that, uh, you know, he, he got out of that situation. So this is some of the recent tweets uh, showing the, the radars. Uh, most of this is, okay, so this is the Doppler radar, and you can see this is the signature of the tornado. When the velocity is going different directions in very close proximity to, uh, you know, so velocity couplets, so one, velocity going one way with one color, the another way with the next color, right close together, indicating 
the uh, rotation indicating, you know, a sure sign. There's another case here, tornado, another case here, tornado. Okay, this is the signature that you see in the Doppler radar, and this is the straight uh, radar signals as these storms, about five hours ago, as these storms were starting to develop before. Normally, these things happen later on in the day because you need the heating throughout the day to get the convective uplift, to get the moisture up high, to generate the clouds and get and uh, get the release of energy to, to fuel the, the supercell um, thunderstorm configurations and then and then get the uh, tornadoes spinning off. Um, this is the best app. Now, I don't have this installed on my computer. I have it on my phone and I have it on another computer. I think you have to pay for each uh, installation, uh, but it is the, it's the best uh, you know, app for following. You know, it's vital if you live in a region that is threatened by tornadoes to have this. Now, let's talk a little bit about the tornado genesis. So. Um, I'm just in Google Images, and I Googled uh, Tornado Genesis, okay? And so I get all these images, and I found some good ones here. So, so basically, if you have wind shear near the surface, so you've got wind coming this way, wind is going into the page, so you get a rolling over, a spinning, okay? You get, the, you get a, an, an overturning, a, ro a rotational motion in the, along the horizontal direction as the front is coming through. Now, with uh, strong updrafts from, this is a cumulonimbus that's tilted over, okay, you get a strong updraft, this whole rotation thing can move up like this, and this can generate, this can then break off here and generate a tornado rotating in this direction that we see here. Now, if you get a roping, now if if the updraft happens in the middle of of the rope of the rope, if you like, so here's the rope spinning this way, this way. The updraft is in the middle. This is lifted up and is rotating this direction. This is lifted up and is rotating the other direction. Okay. So then, what happens is, uh, you know, with downdrafts here breaking the rope. You can have two tornadoes generated that are spinning in opposite directions. Okay, um, so the vorticity is just the rotation. Vorticity, the vorticity, the rotation around an axis. The axis tilts up, breaks, and you can get the two tornadoes forming. Okay, so this is just showing the one here. Um, this is showing, you know, as you have the these uh, storms moving along, there's uh, you can have a warm front, a cold front, updraft here. The convection is in tilted, and this is very important because the the rainfall and the 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 the, the downdraft, the updraft is here and it's spatially separated. The downdraft is here. If this thing is not tilted, if it's just vertical, you have an updraft. If the downdraft is in the same location as the updraft, then it can quench the storm, but because the thing is tilted over, uh, it can be prop propagate, propagate along. Um, this is just a hand-drawn image, the wind shear. When, as you go up, the wind is stronger and stronger, so this whole thing will tilt over. Um, and, uh, you know, you have basically a wall cloud here. Storm motion is in this direction, um, and you can have you know, uh, uplift here. You can have rainfall here in a different location. You can get um, precipitation circling around many times, generating, uh, you know, the hail. You know, you cut open hail, it can look like uh, peeling back an onion, different layers. And this is considered to be the hail moving up and down in the, um, in the uh, rain cloud. Okay, um, just a couple other things. Um, I've, I just want to bring up this. Uh, Paul, are you thinking of making a video on this tornado outbreak? Well, yes, I'm doing it right now, actually. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, so um, I just want to look at some of these images here. So this is the, th in this image here, I, I can count one tornado here, two tornadoes here, probably a tornado there, three, 
probably another one here, four, maybe another one down here. There's maybe five tornadoes in this image. And this is the type of thing that you get on radar scope. Anyway, thanks for listening.